In an effort to defend the Trump administration's handling of the migrant crisis, the U.S. Vice President visited two detention facilities on the southern border on Friday. First, Mike Pence toured a newer center that opened in May to help with the overflow of migrants. Now, this one held families, and Pence says he didn't see the so-called inhumane conditions often reported. He said the migrants there were being treated well and were getting compassionate care. Now look at this. It was a very different picture here at the single adults facility that Pence visited next. It was packed. The men said that they didn't have access to showers, were not able to brush their teeth, and were sleeping on the floor. Border Patrol says there isn't enough room for cots. CNN's Pamela Brown asked the U.S. Vice President about the discrepancy between these two facilities. We went to two different facilities today, and there yeah. seemed to be a big difference between the first one where the families were being housed and the one here where there are single adult migrants. Um, when I went in there, one of them said to me, um, I'm talking about the second facility, this isn't human, the way we're treated. Um, it was, there was a horrible smell. I'm sure you smelled it. You were in there as well. They were sleeping on concrete because there's not enough room for cots, we're told. It was hot. Some of them claim they were hungry. Is that acceptable to you? No, it's not. And it's the reason why we demanded that Congress provide $4.6 billion in additional support uh, to Customs and Border Protection. Look, for the last six months, Democrats in Congress have been saying this is a manufactured crisis. But as you saw firsthand today, here at the um, McAllen station, where our, our cells are overflowing, and now that temporary facility that you just saw uh, had to be established. And then the first facility that we saw, where nearly a thousand families with children are being detained, uh, ought to be a very clear message to every American that the time for action is now, and the time for Congress to act to end the flow of families that are coming north from Central America to our border is now. The first facility we went to with the families, was that really a fair representation of how most of the migrant families have been treated under CBP care? You are at the epicenter here in the Rio Grande Valley of this crisis of illegal immigration. 60% of those that are being detained coming across our southern border are coming through this sector. And so I think what we saw today was a very fair representation of how families are being treated. And look, but there's several different facilities, and I, this was one of them. I understand that Americans was just are troubled. built and made to handle the overcrowding. Yeah. Americans are troubled by by what by what they've read in the newspapers about well, families not being cared for. All you have to do is look at pictures for. like this. I mean, when you look at that, what do you see? Well, I, I, I can't account for that. What I can account for is that the, the facility the that you How do saw. How not account for this? The, it's the facility that you saw today represents the level and the standard of care that we are working to bring to all those caught up in this crisis. Now, immigration attorney Alan Diamante joins me now from Los Angeles. First, uh, can I get you to react to those videos that you're seeing of those detention centers? Well, it doesn't surprise me. I do believe that there are violations of human rights in these detention facilities. I have the opportunity to speak with the families, to speak to individuals that are separated from their children or their spouses, and they shared with me the issues that they encounter when they're in these detention facilities. And a lot of them complain that they're, they're treated poorly, they're talked to poorly, and they, they often are either hungry or they're not given the, uh, the opportunity to use the facilities when they need to use the facilities. These are just examples. And I hear firsthand from the individuals that have been detained. But what should we expect? I mean, I understand everybody would, would like for conditions to be better, but realistically speaking, what should we expect? Because there are tens of thousands of people who are being apprehended as they come across the border every month. So perhaps it's not realistic to expect the very best treatment. That's, that's, that's what I'd like you to help us with. How should we calibrate expectations? Well, it's difficult to uh, handle so many people, but maybe we have to change our system. We do know that there's a crisis, not only at the border, but there's a crisis in Central America and in Mexico with respect to uh, individuals leaving their homes because uh, they're escaping violence. Women escaping rape, escaping, escaping violence from uh, gangs, 
Uh, so this is the crisis. This is the humanitarian crisis. And the question is, what is the United States doing about that? Does the United States share any burden to help the Western Hemisphere with this crisis? And I don't believe that they're doing their job. Now, I want to talk about the ICE raids, Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Those start on Sunday across the country, 10 cities, uh, to arrest and deport thousands of undocumented immigrants. Now, you've been in touch with those populations. What are they telling you? Yes. Well, people are living in fear. Uh, this is uh, an act of uh, terrorizing communities across the country. And uh, in Los Angeles, where I practice, uh, there are many people that live in fear and they just don't know what to do. So we have rapid response networks. We have attorneys and community-based organizations. And uh, here in, California, in Los Angeles, the Federation of Labor, uh, doing everything it can to inform the public on what they can do. They have constitutional rights. A lot of people believe that uh, undocumented don't have constitutional rights. Well, they do have constitutional rights. And they do not have to open what the door, for example. Well, for example, the, the search and seizure rights that they're entitled to under the Constitution. In other words, the government can't just pull somebody over and ask them for papers. They must have, an, uh, under their own regulations, uh, regarding, regarding the, the Code of Federal Regulations, they have to um, have a, a reasonable suspicion backed up by articulable facts um, to ask somebody for their documents. And often they'll just go ahead and ask people for their documents. Now, they're saying they're going to focus on people with deportation orders. But what they often do is they gather all the people in the vicinity and ask them for their papers. And that's in violation. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't know that they have rights. And they waive those rights and they give information. So we're telling people, well, you don't have to give this information. You don't have to open your door. They're not going to have a search warrant. Uh, if they have a deportation order, that's an administrative order. It's not a search warrant. They cannot enter the house without permission. So we're telling folks, don't open the door. And if they're knocking on the door saying that they're police officers, well, they could call 911 to confirm if they're the police or if they're ICE. Okay, so, so those are the ways, those are the rights of undocumented immigrants in the U.S. And those are ways in which they can, in some respects, actually avoid being arrested uh, or found by ICE. But the administration's argument is, look, we are going after people whom the courts whom the U.S. judicial system, immigration system, has decided needed to leave the country. We're going after those people. Are you saying that immigration just shouldn't do that in this country? Well, let me tell you, a lot of those folks that have a deportation order are not even aware that they have a deportation order. Often people are ordered deported in absentia. In other words, they weren't given notice of their hearing, and they weren't even aware that they were they have a deportation order. So these folks should have a reasonable opportunity to get their cases assessed and to reopen their cases, especially if they have family here in the United States. Many of these folks have United States citizen children and other family members that are United States citizens, and often they're deported without given the opportunity to have an attorney investigate their case to determine whether they could get the case reopened. And I often encounter that. Unfortunately, people from Mexico, if they're picked up, they could find themselves in at the on the other side the same day. People from Central America, unfortunately, might have two or three weeks before they get deported. But again, these rapid response networks that we have across the country, we have it in Los Angeles, in San Francisco, and in San Diego. Uh, organizations are providing legal assistance to individuals that find themselves in this situation because we're talking about not only helping an individual, but helping a family. All right, Alan Diamante, thank you very much. The ICE raids are scheduled to start on Sunday. Thanks, Alan.